Hello friends, welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Asser. I want to bring this uh, report to you. It was published a year ago uh, in June of 2021, but I have some updated uh, data uh, from this. And what it examines, it was published in Geophysical Research Letters, that um, satellite and ocean data reveal marked increase in Earth's heating rate. Heating rate, it's very important. How many times you've heard me discuss about the rate of change is what is important. Okay, let's look at the abstract and then we'll continue. Earth's energy imbalance, known as EEI, is relatively small, presently about 0.3% difference between global mean solar radiation absorbed and thermal infrared radiation emitted to space. So in other words, what, what heat energy comes in and what heat energy goes back out to space. It's pretty much well balanced. The difference is about this percentage. EEI is set by natural and anthropogenic climate forcings and the climate system's response to those forcings. It is also influenced by internal variations within the climate system. Most of EEI warms the ocean. Oh, it makes sense, right? 70 over 70% 70 of the surface is ocean. The remainder heats the land, melts ice, warms the atmosphere. We show that independent satellite and in situ observations each yield statistically indistinguishable decadal increases in EEI from mid-2005 to mid-2019 of 0 0.50 plus or minus 0 0.47 watts per square meter per decade. And that's you know 5% to 95% confidence interval. Uh, basically, they did a two-tail uh, test. This trend is primarily due to an increase in absorbed solar radiation associated with decreased deflection by clouds and sea ice and a decrease in outgoing long wave radiation olr due to increases in trace gases and water vapor okay Increase in solar radiation associated with decreased reflection by clouds and sea ice. Ah, translation, decreased albedo. And a decrease in outgoing long wave radiation. When sun energy comes into the, the, the planet, it comes in in the ultraviolet end of the spectrum called short wave radiation, UV. Right, way you wear you know, sunscreen protection when you're sitting there on the beach cooking yourselves. After it reaches the surface, some of it is absorbed, some of it is reflected back up in, through the atmosphere into out to space, unless clouds trap it, what have you. But it's reflected back out in the long wave radiation end of the spectrum, which is the infrared part of the spectrum. So these changes combined exceed a positive trend and outgoing long wave radiation due to increasing global mean temperatures. So what are the key points? Okay. Satellite in situ observations independently show an approximate doubling, doubling of Earth's energy imbalance from mid 05 to mid 2019, basically 14, 15 year period. Anthropogenic forcing, internal variability, climate feedback, all contribute to the positive trend in EEI. Marked decreases in clouds and sea ice, increases in trace gases and water vapor combined to increase the rate of planetary heat uptake. Remember, water vapor is a greenhouse gas. Let's look at the plain language summary. Climate is determined by how much of the sun's energy the Earth absorbs and how much energy Earth 
shed through emission of thermal infrared radiation. Their sum determines whether Earth heats up or cools down, or you can say the difference. Continued increases in concentration of well-mixed greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and the long time skills, uh, time required for the ocean, cryosphere, and land to come to thermal equilibrium with those increases result in a net gain of energy or warming on Earth. Most of this excess energy, about 90%, well, it's about 93%, warms the ocean. And I discussed that with you in great lengths. With the remainder heating the land, melting snow and ice, warming the atmosphere. Here we compare satellite observations of the net radiant energy absorbed by Earth with a global array of measurements used to determine heating within the ocean, land and atmosphere, melting snow and ice. We show that these two independent approaches yield a decadal increase in the rate of energy uptake from Earth from mid-05 through mid-2019, which we attribute to decreased reflection of energy back into space by clouds and sea ice, increases in well-mixed greenhouse gases and water vapor. Makes sense, right? <laughs> You're decreasing the albedo, more energy is absorbed at the surface as opposed to reflected back into space before it can even be absorbed. Okay, I'm going to go through the introduction with you, and then I'm just going to get right to the heart of it and show you some of the updated diagram that, to me, um, really sums this up very nicely. I will leave the URL for those of you who want to read through this paper. I'll leave that in the comments section. Increasing well-mixed greenhouse gases have led to an imbalance between how much solar energy is absorbed by Earth, how much thermal infrared radiation is emitted to space. The net radiation imbalance, also referred to as Earth energy imbalance, EEI, has led to increased global mean temperature, sea level rise, increased heating within the ocean, melting of snow and ice. And sea ice. In addition to anthropogenic radiative forcing by well-mixed greenhouse gases, Earth's energy imbalance is influenced by aerosol emissions and land use change, as well as by natural forcing associated with volcanic emissions and variations of solar irradiance. As the climate system responds to warming, changes in clouds, water vapor, surface albedo, and temperature further alter EEI. These properties also respond to internal variations in the climate system occurring over a range of time scales, causing additional EEI variability. Examples of internal variations include weather events, which vary from days to weeks, uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation, and so events, which vary on interannual time scales, and the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, the PDO, which varies on, on the decadal time scales. And they looked at specifically the PDO, and I'll, I'll have more to say of that on that later. Since about 90% of the excess energy associated with EEI stored in the ocean, fluctuation in Earth's top of atmosphere, that's TOA, top of atmosphere. You're going to want to remember that when I show you the graphics. So fluctuation in Earth's top of the uh, atmosphere, net radiation, and the ocean's heating rate should be in phase with one another. Indeed, prior comparison of EEI variations derived from in situ measurements after 05 and satellite observations of Earth's net radiation track one another at interannual timescales. More recently, analyses of ocean temperature data have indicated the rate of ocean heating has been steadily increasing. Ooh, where have you heard that before? Uh, to the tune of 240, 247 zettajoules? In addition, sea level rise from 93 to uh, 2017 has exhibited a statistically significant acceleration. And I showed you that in my ocean heat content videos. However, acceleration of melting ice on land accounts for the majority of sea level rise acceleration in recent decades. Well, makes sense. You melt, you, melt you, you take one phase of uh, hydrogen, uh, uh, dihydrogen oxide, 
go from solid to liquid and add it to the ocean, yeah, it's going to increase that. And it makes sense. That'll probably account for most of it. But part of it is also thermal expansion itself. And they go on to say, in this study, we perform uh, a direct comparison. Uh, they combine estimates of energy uptake by a deeper ocean, lithosphere, land, cryosphere, and the atmosphere. Okay. And they say, through, then they go through the data and methods and, and so on. Let's cut right to it. So I want to uh, go right to this here. Uh, actually... Yes, this is, we'll go with this one first, and then we'll go back to that second one. So, global net top of atmosphere radiation, that's in blue. Absorbed solar radiation, that's in, what's that, orange? <laughs> and then outgoing long wave radiation, reddish. Okay, anyway, so what we have here, and this is basically, the units are watts per square meter. Okay. Right, so watts per square meter. And what do we see overall? The blue dashed line, okay. So when you look at the ups and downs, okay, that's, you know, it's starting from, you know, 2000 going up to 2022. That's why this is updated information. And the ups and downs that reflect seasonal variations. And what do we see? We see a positive slope. That means at the top of the atmosphere, radiation is you know, receiving increased energy. Outgoing long wave radiation. Again, we see the seasonal uh, variations. And again, we see what? A positive slope. It's okay, telling us, okay, outgoing radiation is also increasing. And these two have almost similar slopes. So basically increasing at the same rate. But let's look at absorbed solar radiation. This is this absorbed solar radiation, that is what heats the ground. That's what heats the ocean. That's what heats the ice. Again, seasonal stuff going on. And then there's some other uh, time periods going on reflecting, uh, you know, the, the scales of, of ENSO, PDO, and so forth. Okay. So they're basically, if you look at here, they're showing this, uh, the, the cycles, whether it's due to weather, and so PDO knows the oscillatory systems uh, that they examined in this study. But here's the thing. It's also increasing. But notice how this rate of increase is different than the rate of increases for top of the atmosphere and outgoing long wave radiation. It's increasing at a higher rate. This is your imbalance. So if this is increasing at a higher rate, that means what? The ground is absorbing more energy. It's increasing at a higher rate, it's absorbing more energy. Now, let me briefly talk about what they said about the PDO. The PDO, when they're looking at it, it was actually like it tended to be in a negative phase versus a positive phase. So they expected the uh, the uh, imbalance, the EEI, to actually be less. They did not expect the uh, the absorbed solar radiation radiation to be as high as they measured. And what they noticed was that there was decreased clouds, decreased clouds, decreased albedo. Increase energy absorbed at the surface. That's basically what, and, and we we discussed that earlier when we looked at the uh, abstract and the uh, the key points there. So now let's look at it. This one. So now we're looking at absorbed 
solar radiation, outgoing long wave radiation. All right? There's a slope here. See this? These vertical hash lines, I guess it's supposed to be in that color, orangey, whatever. That's your imbalance. That's your difference. That's your difference there. That is how much warming that's the Earth is doing at the surface. Right there. So, um, this shows it pretty plainly. And then finally, let's look at this one. Earth's energy imbalance overall, the net flux. Right? It's going from 2000 to 2021 and so on. Watts per square meter. Whammo. We see a clear positive trend. Now, some of these reflect the dips and the peaks there. The troughs and the peak reflect some of the cycles uh, being considered. Well, this is when PDO is probably in a negative phase here. And, you know, so PDO and so just plain weather, seasonality, etc. But the trend is unmistakable. The energy impounds is increasing at a considerable rate. In fact, they're saying that the rate is 1.6 watts per square meter per year, I think is what they said. Think about that. 1.6 watts per square meter on an annual basis. Why is the planet heating up so much? This is one explanation. Couple that with uh, the annual greenhouse gas index that I discussed with you that NOAA does. And you're basically going to find similar results. That the planet is also warming. And it's warming at a significant rate. Remember, they, they tested it and they found statistically significant rate. So that means this slope is significantly different from zero. Showing a trend. So their study agrees nicely with what the NOAA has been doing with their annual greenhouse gas index, or the AGGI. Again, I did a video on that. You may want to check that out. I even took you through the comp computation there to show how they calculated that. So uh, the thing with, the, with NOAA is they actually broke it down by the different types of gases, CO2, methane, uh, nitrous oxide, and so forth. So those two studies there are agreeing with each other and are showing a clear increased warming of the planet's surface. This, of course, leads to why the planet is warming as it does. And don't forget, oceans absorbing a lot of that energy. What if that energy starts to diffuse back to the atmosphere in considerable quantities? Then the warming will be even more pronounced. Okay. Wanted to share that with you to, sh to show you the data. To show you that, you know, we, we actually are measuring the significant changes taking place. Thank you for your time. Hello, folks. This is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.